first session of the main part of the GD conference. Uh, this is this talk is meant to be an overview of GD, uh, how GD is, uh, what GD is, how it's being built, how it's being used, how it relates to other other efforts around the world. And uh, at the end, I will do a simple demonstration to show you uh, how you can run very quickly get started with running an experiment on GD. So my name is Vic Thomas. I'm with the GD Project Office, and um, uh, as I said, please feel free to ask questions. So here's a outline for the talk. I'm going to talk about GD, what GD is, the concept, how GD is being built, uh, how it's being used for research and for education, future plans, and then, as I said, the demo. So we all use global networks such as the internet every day. Uh, they are extremely important. We use them for mission critical things such as banking, sending Facebook updates, um, all kinds of, uh, uh, we depend on them in, in uh, many different ways. It's almost like a, an essential utility these days. These are extremely complex networks. We get deployed around the world. There are a lot of different organizations of, of deploying and organizing and operating these networks. But we still don't really understand the science behind these networks. These are large, largely engineering networks. We deploy these networks, we see how they work, make some tweaks here and there, but don't understand the fundamental science behind these networks. There are also innovation barriers in today's networks. These are production networks. If you have a great idea for a backbone routing protocol, we just can't walk up to AT&T <laughs> or Sprint and say, hey, would you please replace uh, or try my new um, algorithm or my new protocol in your backbone. They won't let you do that. And because of, because of this, all the, much of the innovation we see today happens at the edges of the network. We see a lot of innovation on the client end, on the server end, but there's very little innovation happening in the core of the network. And then there are societal issues. As I said, we use uh, the internet for, uh, for critical functions, for uh, such as banking, health records, but we again really don't understand the security or privacy implications of doing so. Uh, we hear about credit card numbers being, being stolen, we hear about all kinds of different attacks every day, but we still continue to use it. To address these problems with the uh, uh, current state of the internet or global networks, the National Science Funded projects to look at the uh, uh, redesign of the internet, looking, these projects are looking at, well, if we were to start from scratch, how would we build the, the future internet? There are projects looking at aspects of, uh, of design, they're looking at aspects of security. So all these projects need a test bed, some place where they can try out the protocols. As I said earlier, you can't really go to a network provider and say, hey, can I experiment with your network? So to address that, the National Science Foundation is, um, has funded the creation of a testbed, the GD testbed. GD consists of compute nodes distributed around the country, connected by layer two networks, by, um, by backbone networks, by regional networks. So you as an experimenter can get compute resources from uh, locations around the country, you can connect them in topologies that make sense for you, for your experiment software on these um, compute resources, and uh, you can run your own network experiments. You get a layer two network, so you can run any uh, layer three or above protocol. You have root access on the end, on the compute nodes. You can install any operating system, any software. So. Uh, you as an experimenter can now do experiments that are not possible on the internet. You can do them in a geographically distributed manner, and you can do them at scale. There are literally hundreds of resources distributed around the country. So that's GD, a test bed for networking and distributed system research. So um, a couple of key concepts that make GD possible. So GD is a shared test bed, which means there are multiple experiments running on genes at the same time. How do we do that? 
every genie experiment lives in what is called a slice. And so uh, there are multiple slices uh, in genie. When you run an experiment, you create a slice. You um, get to add resources to your slice. A slice is kind of like an empty container. When you start, you add resources, and then you get once you get the resources, you program the resources and run your experiment. So here we have our experimenter running an experiment, and then we have another, a second experimenter uh, running also running an experiment. He has his own slice. Each of them has their own um, set of resources in their slice, and our experimenter here can only operate on resources in the slice, and and the other. Um, Experiment that can only operate on resources in this slice. Um, resources can be shared with these slices. What, what I mean. Um, still can only operate on the virtual machine that is uh, belong that is in their slice. Once they get the resources. Uh, our experimental leader can install software on the resource she got. She can also program the network devices, the switches, the routers that are in her slice. So that allows her to control how um, she wants traffic to flow in the network. She can do non IP experiments by having her switches and routers um, you know, in different packet headers in different ways than IP would. So uh, if she can. She can do experiments again that she cannot do on the internet. So as I mentioned, Genie has compute resources. There are many different kinds of compute resources in Genie, uh, starting from the lab. Uh, there are, are Genie research test beds. Some of you might have heard of test beds such as Gladys Lab, MU Lab from Utah, Planet Lab from Princeton, uh, Orbit, a wireless test bed from Rutgers. So these are test beds that existed before Genie. They are now part of Genie, as in you can use your Genie account to access these resources, add them to your slides. Genie has what we call Genie racks. They're essentially, as you can imagine, you might imagine a rack with compute resources, programmable switches, and these are deployed on campuses around the country, 40 or so campuses, and uh, you can get resources from there. And Genie, Genie has wireless compute nodes. So you can run wireless experiments based on WiMAX or um, LTE. And there are also Android hands on headsets. You can hand out to people who can join your experiment and uh, use your experiments. Those are compute resources in GD. Then we have network resources, of course. Um, if you look within a rack, from the top left, uh, you can set up a network that lives entirely within a rack. You can get compute resources from uh, one or more of the compute nodes within a rack, connect them up in a layer two network that then goes over the rack backbone, and you have a little network there that you can program and run experiments for. You can obviously connect racks together. Racks connect, they go across national research backbones, such as Internet2. So you can get resources from one or more racks, or uh, multiple racks, two or more racks, connect them up to policies that the research platforms. Your school or organization may not directly connect to a research platform, uh, such as Internet2, in which case you have to go through a regional network. So for example, Apple University, uh, you can, Indiana connects directly to the internet, but you can, you can also, there's a regional here called Moxie. And campuses uh, around the state, or uh, the region actually, connect through the Mossy Regional to Internet 2. So obviously, the regional, regionals have to be Genie enabled, which means they allow, they have the software, the Genie software in there, you can be able to uh, connect your resources from your campus to the regional, to the backbone, to another campus. And uh, as I mentioned, there are wireless resources, both WiMAX and Five. Overview of what Genie is. It's a test bed for networking research. We talked about the kinds of resources you can get on Genie, compute resources, communication resources, 
and the and the, and the fact that you can connect them in topologies of your choosing. So before I go further, do you have any questions? All right. So what we look at is um, so we kind of got a feel for what Genie is. Uh, how would one use this? Um, so this is more of a cartoonish um, example I have here, uh, which shows how a researcher might come to Genie and use it. So here we have a researcher, uh, a network researcher. I, I don't know why he has test tubes and beakers, but uh, it's a, he's a researcher. And he has a great idea. He decides uh, right up. Um, he uh, he might first try it out in his lab you know, on a small number of machines, <clears throat> but that's not good enough. You're going to have your critics about uh, or your skeptics who say, "Well, really, you know, you you you, you, you try this on a, with a dozen machines. Will that really work over the internet? Will that really scale?" So he comes to Genie, and he decides to get resources from Genie. He get he might get. Compute resources from um, four different locations, Com connect them in a layer to backbone topology. He might get cloud resources from someplace, connect them to his G slice. And in this case, he has a couple of YMAX base stations, so he can get users to use his experimental service from their uh, Android handset. So he starts off, he runs his experiment. People hear about it, they like it, they, they use his experimental service, and he needs more resources. So he decides to grow his slice, add more resources so he can support more users, gets more, so he gets more base stations, more compute resources, and everything sort of looks great. People are happy, he gets he publishes. Um, and, but how do people access the service? Well, there are many ways they might do that. They might um, install an app on their, on their computer, and this app talks directly, bypasses the IP stack on the, on the, on the, on the uh, device, and talks, connects directly to this layer to, um, uh, to a slice. In fact, people can participate in multiple experiments. You could, uh, 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 user might choose to uh, switch between one slice and another to another to participate in a different experiment. And since this might come over the internet, you might have a gateway to the internet. So people who don't want to uh, uh, want to come to the join the experiment that way can choose to choose to do so. So to, to the user of the services, it just looks like an app they download and use, but it but actually they are participating in an experiment. So our experimenter learns a lot. People think it's a cool service, and the skeptics now are convinced. They think it's a great idea. This paper gets published, and he's happy. And that's the kind of experimenters we'd like to see more often. Happy experimenters, lots of publications, and maybe it's an awful company, but then happy to hear after. So if you have a great idea, if you have an idea for 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 a for, for a new internet architecture, a new protocol um, architecture, the NSF size that, uh, has uh, this is where you would go to um, get funding, and uh, we hope that you would use Genie to run your experiments to try out your ideas. And so, do, if you have ideas, do check out the NSF uh, sites. Page for research for, uh, for funding opportunities and to run experiments on Chile. So, to um, kind of summarize, Genie is meant to enable at scale experiments. There are, number, there are large numbers of resources uh, distributed around the country, so you can run large experiments much larger than you could probably run in your lab. You can run experiments that are not compatible with today's internet, non IP experiments. Experiments that require uh, special software in the backbone. You can run repeatable and in the wild experiments. What I mean by that is you can run, ex you can control your experimental environment, uh, and and so uh, 
run experiment, run experiment, repeatedly see how repeatable they are. Or you can just deploy a service and say, hey, let me see how it works out. Let me find out where the um, bottlenecks are. Let me ask people to use it in the world. There are instrumentation and measurement tools that uh, you know, allow you to uh, measure your experiments, see how repeatable they are, or where the problems might be, bottlenecks might be. And we talked about opt-in users. These are users who chose to join your experiment and use it. Use your experimental service so you can get real uh, traffic, real user, user experience. So all these are possible in GD. And they're actually being done. I'll give you examples of uh, services being deployed uh, on GD experimental services that people can sign in to and use. And we have, I'll, I'll also give you examples of experiments that a non-IP experiment that cannot be done on today's internet. Any questions so far? All right. So, um, how do we build Genie? How is Genie being built? Genie is a federation. What that means is Genie resources are owned and operated by entities around the country. Uh, it's uh, different campuses, both GD resources, and they federate with GD, which means they deploy a GD API, a common programming interface, uh, so any GD tool can talk to it. And they also agree to make resources available to anybody who comes with a valid GD credential, with valid GD account. So GD um, resources might include GD racks, as I mentioned, that are deployed on campuses. They might, they might include backbone and regional networks. So you as an experimenter can use your Genie account and go to these uh, resource providers and say, here's my account. I would like from you three virtual machines. I would like from you 10 virtual machines. I would like from you, network provider, a, 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 VLAN, a, a VLANs to connect these resources all together. So, so your slice might use resources that come from um, different uh, resource providers, resource owners, typically campuses. And they might even come from international test beds. International test beds in Europe and Japan have chosen to use the Gini, standardized the Gini standard API. And so you, as Gini experiment, can get resources from those test beds also. So the reason, one of the reasons for this uh, Kind of federated architecture is it, it avoids technology often as new kinds of uh, resources come on all you have to do is put the gdam uh, the GD api in front of it and it's available to gd experimenters and it also allows gd to grow over time uh, uh, as more resources are available we deploy more resources on campuses and, uh, in, and they join the existing not, not, this is not a new idea, but it's worked, it's worked really well for GD. Well, GD, uh, how big is GD now? All these dots represent uh, campuses where we have GD racks. Uh, the, 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 the building circles are where racks already exist. The uh, circles that are not filled in are where racks are being deployed now. So we have uh, I think about close to 40 racks deployed at this point. Um, also deployed, uh, I don't know if you can see the triangles on the map. I will have another picture for that, uh, where you, which is where YMAX base stations are just deployed. I think there are about 14 of those. And uh, these resources are all connected by backbone networks such as Internet2, regional networks such as Moxie and CNA, depending on your geographic location. Learn. The, the shaded states are the states where we have regional networks that are part of GD. So in Indiana, I mentioned Moxie is a regional network. They provide network services for um, Indiana, I think parts of Wisconsin, I think it's Wisconsin. So anyway, so these regional networks are part of GD. So if you live in one of those states and don't connect directly to the Internet to backbone, you can connect to your regional network. They understand GD. They can set up um, pipes, layer to networks from your resource and 
from your GDRAC on your campus to a GDRAC elsewhere. They know how to log essentially from the network. And some of these regional networks also host GDRACs. So obviously, it's uh, impossible to build a test bed that, uh, that is the size of the internet. But GE grows by taking advantage of existing infrastructure. I, uh, you can genie enable improvement on campuses. So there are already campuses with campus networks, with switches deployed. On many campuses, you can upgrade these switches with a firmware, just with a firmware update to make them open flow enabled. Open flow is a technology, software defined networking technology that allows you to uh, partition your switch for research and for production. So you can use their existing campus infrastructure, uh, make the software upgrade to, to enable home flow, and now you can use your campus existing campus network to do research, uh, uh, extra experimental traffic, uh, even programming switches. Stanford, for example, is a campus where this has been deployed at a very large scale. Other campuses, too, such as Georgia Tech and Kentucky, also have. Deployments of open flow on the campus network. Reason we go to campuses? Well, that's where our um, researchers live. Uh, we want to deploy software on these networks. That's where our early adopters, students, live. Well, we need to install apps or try out new services. And uh, so that's the different place to start. And, and uh, we grow Genie by uh, enabling campus at a time, either installing. Um, open, open, starting open flow and so, uh, software defined networking technology on your existing test beds, deploy GD racks, or both. <coughs> yes. Excuse me, before you go on, on the previous slide. Yes. Uh, uh, hard to hear back here. Oh, uh, sorry. Did you say why some of the states are shaded brown? Yes. So, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was not loud. Sure. better? Um, yes, so those are states where the, uh, the regional network, the uh, regional research and education network that connects campuses on the state with the backbone are GD enabled, which means if you live on the, if you have a GD resource on the campus, the regional knows how to plumb your uh, 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 network from your experimental resource through the regional to the backbone. And then on to some other campus. And so then the orange states are ones where there's the point connection rather than the state networks? Oh, sorry, the, uh, um, this does a little. The, the, Texas was the first state to be to be GD enabled, and the orange ones are being currently GD, uh, that are being GD enabled right now. This does a little out of There are many more that are GD enabled. Okay, so within a year, all of those are going to be uh, the brown. Uh, less than that. Less than because uh, less than a year in, in uh, by June, by June of next year. Yes. So when you the slide, the slices, do they interact with each other? Uh, slices. Uh, uh, the same resources, so I'm sure they interact. Right. So the, uh, depending on the resource, depending on the aggregate, they might you might not get perfect performance isolation. You, you get functional isolation, as in your experiment cannot access resources and do things to other people's experiments. But there are ways in which you can make, or you can um, increase the amount of isolation you get. So for example, you can ask for a raw PC, a complete PC to yourself. So you get better isolation that way. You're not competing with anybody else for compute resources. Uh, on the on the backbone networks, that is a shared resource. You get your VLAN, but yes, the, it's, it's, we cannot guarantee isolation there. Uh, performance isolation. So, um, so uh, again, depending on how you, which resources you pick, from which aggregate, the amount of performance isolation you get there. Same with the wireless resources. You can't control the, the wireless. So, so this, this chart is an overview of the GD network architecture. 
I'm going to start from the left, move to the right. On the left is a typical genie deployment at a campus. So the campus may have a genie rack that's shown on the left that connects to the campus network, campus open flow network. The genie rack might also connect to a WiMAX base station on the campus. And then the orange lines are the research and education networks, either a regional network or a backbone network. So the campus connects to a regional network. Uh, if you were if in Indiana, you can connect to Moxie, which might have its own genie rack, but it would definitely have programmable switches so they can plumb traffic from the campus to the backbone. And the regional network connects to uh, national research backbone network such as Internet2, and so uh, to, so you can connect resources across the country. All your experimental traffic, all your experiment traffic would go over the orange network, so from the campus through a regional to a backbone and back out someplace else. To, to set up this network to, to um, uh, essentially get your compute resources, to connect them together, you need some kind of a control plane. Some, something that can coordinate all this, the, the, can find the resources for you, set them up for you, uh, so you can run your experiment. And that control plane in Genie runs over the regular internet. And that is the blue network on top. So use an experimenter, use the regular internet to talk to the, these various resource providers and ask for resources and tell them to set up your resources in a certain way. So these are essentially web services, we have tools, that can go to a campus and say, please give me a virtual machine and connect it over your campus backbone and, and to your regional. You go to the regional and say, hey, I got this VLAN from this campus. Please connect this virtual lab, VLAN to the Internet to backbone. Go to the Internet to backbone. Tell them, please connect this VLAN I got to, to um, uh, so it connects to say from Indiana, you want to go to Stanford, please connect me to Stanford, and, and so on. So you're going over the internet, talking to these various resource providers to set up your experiment. Once your experiment is set up, the network is set up. All your experiment traffic can go over the, uh, exp uh, the research and education networks. Uh, obviously, you know, the, you don't, these aren't phone calls or, or, uh, or it's not a manual, it's, it's not something that the experimenter would literally talk to these entities. There are experimental tools that make API calls to the various resource providers that will set up this, this network. Okay. So the important takeaway here is that your experimental traffic does not go over the internet. It goes over um, campus networks, regional networks, backbone networks. But to set this up, you use the internet, web services. That's an example of a uh, deployment, Wisconsin, University of Wisconsin, uh, is a is a good example. Uh, in fact, we have a couple of people from Wisconsin in the back. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, researchers on campus, Parmesh and Suman, Parmesh is back there, uh, who um, have driven a lot of this effort. We have a genie rack at Wisconsin that uh, connects to the campus network on the right, and it connects to the campus and on the left, it connects the switches to uh, I think they go from there to Chicago on to the Moxie, which is a regional in this, in this area, and out to the to, to, to Internet 2. They also have WiMAX resources on campus that connect to the Genie Rack. And they have other campus networks. They have a, um, they have networks that connect to local uh, community resources, ambulances, and the buses to the campus network which can also connect to, uh, to Genie. So, um, yeah. so, so here's an example of a campus that has open flow enabled switches, they have a Genie rack, and they have WiMAX base stations, and they have other campus networks that, 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 that are part of this, uh, this deployment. I mentioned G Internet2 as the backbone network provider. We have had a long-standing collaboration with uh, Internet2. They, uh, Internet2 itself is deploying uh, 
programmable switches, all through the infrastructure, and they are also upgrading the network uh, to, to 100 gigabits per second. So Internet2 provides circuits for Gini experimenters. What this means is that when they uh, uh, when you have Gini resources at different campuses that you, as an experimenter, want to connect, you can they will actually set up a circuit for you dynamically uh, and, uh, for your experiment. So they are in the progress of, uh, so they stood up a service called ION, uh, which is, we still use today, but they're moving to a, uh, a service called AL2S, which is, uh, with, uh, it's, uh, allows you as an experimenter to do, to, 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 gives you more control over the backwards, over, over the programmable switches deployed in Internet 2. So that is currently being deployed and, uh, and tested. It's, you can use it today. In a limited scale, they will want to make sure that your controllers, the ones that control the backbone switches, are the first tested in some kind of a sandbox to make sure that it's not going to do something bad before they deploy it, let you deploy it on the air production. So we hope, so it's, it's being tested, this is being tested right now, and I, uh, we hope it will go, uh, be available soon. If you want to learn more about uh, uh, about the Internet to Deployment, this is session uh, today. I'm sorry, Wednesday at 1.30. It's an operation session. We'll have operators of various campus network resources talk about the status of various uh, things they're doing. So the wide network for wireless, we have an agreement with Sprint to share spectrum. So uh, on, on campuses, Sprint allows GE to use certain parts of the spectrum allocated for, for cell phone service, uh, and we use that for experimental for experiments. Uh, SideWindNet is a, a research uh, MVNO, uh, so essentially a cell phone provider uh, for research, and uh, it's, it's, it uses uh, resources from Sprint and uh, Terra. So. An NVO NVNO is a virtual network operator, which means they don't really deploy their own resources, but they lease resources such as from from providers such as Sprint. So this is a research NVNO, and this effort is being led by Jim Martin and Alan Seskar, and I think you will see a demo uh, this evening uh, that uses CyberNet. They did a demo at the last GD conference also. So if you want to do research on cell phone based networks that's the side by that is what you want uh, here's our bimax deployment uh, there are parts of the group the base stations and parts of the country connected and connecting through campuses and regional networks to to the backboard um, i think there are 26 bimax base stations on 30 campuses so many campuses Obviously, uh, there are about 90 hand, Android handsets available, and, and, and these are sliced. The base stations are sliced, so it's not a regular base station. What this means is you can have multiple experiments use the same base station, multiple slices use the same base station at the same time. So, different uh, experiments would essentially broadcast different uh, IDs uh, and, uh, for, and, and would connect to. They will essentially act as different providers. You, as, an, as a, a user of the experimental service, would tell your phone connect to this provider, experiment number 23, and then be getting service from that experiment, and you can run your, you can use the service provided by that experiment. When we have a network like this, you need operations, you need somebody to make, keep track of uh, things, uh, uh, handle emergencies. And the organization that does that is the GD Meta Operations Center right here at Indiana University. So um, today at the demo session, they will. Indiana University is the um, network operator for Internet 2. And so they already have the infrastructure needed to operate a, uh, a network <coughs> such as GD. And uh, you'll see the operations center today at the, at the demo session. It's pretty cool. It's like a control room. Large screens so you keep track of these 
status of the network, outages, and so on. They, so they uh, monitor all the resources. Uh, if there's a outage, a maintenance outage plan, for example, these operators on, on campuses inform the GMOC, the operation center. So there's a calendar where you can go and look to see which resources might not be available when. There's also a mailing list you can sign up as an experimenter to be notified of planned outages. Another important function of GMOC is handling, handling emergency stock. As you can imagine, when you have networks like this with large numbers of resources, people might be tempted to do things that they should not be doing, share the, sharing violent music or whatever, or slices doing unintentionally doing bad things such as sending traffic, perhaps the internet that they should not be. And so there's an emergency stop procedure that the um, that the GMOC has that they work that they do in coordination with the campus operators. They can shut down a slice and uh, or an, ex an experiment uh, keep, if they suspect something bad is happening. So uh, we talked about we talked so far about uh, in this part of the talk about how GD is being built, how it's being deployed, uh, how you can the product overview of the GD architecture, how you can set up the data plane that goes over the research networks using the control plane which goes over the internet, and we talked about operations. We talked, uh, I mentioned GD racks earlier, resources that are being deployed. There are racks from three different vendors. Uh, so you might have heard of the uh, heard of Exogeny racks. These are racks that uh, the, uh, the rack team is led by Ilya Baldin of uh, Renzi, which is a research institute in North Carolina. The hardware comes from IBM. There are um, Instagini racks, which, uh, which are built by HP. Dick McGear is the CI there. And then there are racks from Dell uh, and Clemson. And, uh, so you can get racks from any of these vendors. Exogini racks have uh, a lot more compute power and faster network cards. They're more expensive, so there are there are fewer of them deployed. Instead of racks, uh, they're less expensive, so there are many, many more of those deployed. And Dell racks, the Dell announced their racks uh, just about maybe, uh, six months ago, so there are fewer of those. But there are, uh, they're somewhere in between in terms of, uh, actually they're comparable to Exogeny, I guess, in terms of compute power. So that was an overview of Genie, as in what Genie is, how it's been built and deployed. Any questions? Okay, so let's now look at how people are actually. Yes. Uh, yes. So there are so from an experimental point of view, there's some other small subtle differences uh, because of the virtualization technology used. And the, uh, so uh, you as an experimenter both need to be aware of some differences. If you're doing a very simple experiment, like it does give you a virtual machine, uh, you can't tell the difference. But when you actually start doing things in the virtual machines, uh, such as uh, just the way that things are configured a little different. So at a, at a, at a high level, they're similar, but uh, you do run into differences when you start programming. But in terms of hardware, there's a significant difference. So, this, for example, um, it's not your, uh, there's a project that's trying to build infrastructures for uh, large uh, high performance computing applications, large data applications. And that experiment tends to use exogeny resources because you can much more, there's a lot, lot more compute power there. Any other questions? So how is Genie being used? Genie is being used for research. We talked a lot about that. Genie is also being used for education. Uh, it's being used to teach classes in computer networking, distributed systems, cloud, cloud computing, and give more examples. And I mentioned in terms of research, there are future internet architecture projects looking at Genie, using Genie, software-defined networking projects, cloud, compute, cloud networking, pro cloud computing projects. Um, Domain sciences, that's the uh, 
high, high uh, data, data intensive applications. Here are some examples. We have um, the NSF is funding uh, large future internet architecture projects. Four of them are uh, either using Genie or have, uh, uh, or have used Genie. Uh, the starting from the bottom left, the Mobility First project. They are uh, the nice, one of the things about this GEC is all four of these future internet projects, architecture projects, have added tutorials in this GEC. So if you want to learn more, you can go to the tutorials. The bottom left is mobility first. This um, team, their thesis is that um, most of the internet access in the future will be from mobile devices. Not that the original internet was designed to connect computers that were sitting in computer centers on people's desks. That's not true anymore. And so they're looking at a fundamentally different design for the internet that's optimized for mobile access. The name data networking tutorial uh, on the project, uh, they have a tutorial. They, they, their thesis is that you should be, you as a user should be accessing information by name, not by address. So for example, today, if you want to know the weather in Bloomington, Indiana, you have to say, hmm, who should I ask for this information? Well, maybe weather.com does. So you go to weather.com and ask for the information and get it. And, and, and this architecture, you just ask the network, I want the weather in Bloomington, Indiana. And the network will find that for you. The information might come from a cache, from somebody else's computer who made a similar query a few minutes ago, or it might come from some other data source. So this architecture is all about naming uh, data information and accessing information by name. The SIA project, also doing a tutorial. Their uh, project is, they're looking at two different things. One is an extensible addressing architecture. And today's internet, entities that are named are computers. They have IP addresses, that's how you, 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 you name computers. And their architecture, you know, naming is much more generalized. You name computers, you name app people, you name content, you name Anything that uh, every first class object in the, in, in the internet has a name. So it's a much more extensible naming scheme, and they're also looking at security. And the choice then, they are different from the other projects, kind of interesting. They have, they're looking more at the economics of the future internet and how that might uh, affect your architecture. Uh, so um, it's, it's, um, uh, the, 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 the notion is that. You as a consumer should have should be able to make informed choices about who your service provider is, who your backbone network provider is, and dynamically switch uh, who's going to provide what service based on how much you're willing to pay, how well the provider is doing. And, uh, again, they have to Another example of uh, example of the software defined networking research. We have uh, Armesh in the back of the room and Casey, who are doing a very interesting, uh, deploying an interesting service called Genie Cinema on Genie, where um, they, uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a streaming service, a video streaming service, where um, uh, you can uh, stream video, people can access it, they use OpenFlow in the network to, to find the best source, location, the server that can give you the best video. And uh, in fact, they might, do you have it? Okay, so th apparently they are recording this talk as we speak. And I'm told I should be able to watch myself on, uh, on their service, on my phone. Successfully added a video. Okay. I've never done this before, neither have they, so we'll see if it works. <laughs> Looks like a tap room to me. I'm sorry, what am I supposed to do? 
Okay, so the, the camera's not responding. All right. It's not my potential, I hope. Sorry. So then there's uh, another uh, experiment that um, uh, Mike Zink is running. So the University of Massachusetts has um, weather radars deployed at, uh, I think in Oklahoma, and uh, they get live um, weather, uh, radar, weather radar information, and they have an application that runs over Genie to get, uh, it's a now casting application where you can get really, really short time forecasts. So what is the, is it going to, is, is it going to rain in the next 10 minutes? Um, most people would just look out the window, but I guess these things where the researchers like to to suggest uh, this. But they also have uh, something called software defined exchanges. You've heard a lot of that about that over the next uh, few months. It's a, it's a new concept where you have two software defined networks that need to appear, and it's called a software defined exchange where they appear. And um, the research issues are how do you hear these networks? We know how BGP really really works, but we don't quite understand how software how software defined networks can appear. So that's the that's research that might think and others are doing. You might have heard of US Ignite. This is a uh, large White House led initiative. Broadband broadband based applications in communities throughout the country. So um, uh, these are applications that are meant to help the local populations, emergency response kind of applications, education, educational applications, healthcare delivery related applications. And so uh, the US Ignite project, uh, uh, we, we, we cooperate with them. We, the US Ignite GD researchers can use US Ignite networks and resources and vice versa, and are uh, actually. Uh, Researchers who, who take advantage of any tools to build US Ignite applications. I mentioned the use of Genie in the classroom. Over 50 classes have used Genie, uh, both at the graduate and undergraduate level, and also internationally. Uh, three countries have used uh, Genie in the classroom. If you go to the GD wiki, there are ready to use tutorial assignments that teach you how to use GD, that teach network concepts. So, this is really one of the really popular assignments is one about uh, teaching IP routing. So, people get a small network, they uh, assign the task of setting up routing to route traffic in a certain way. And they actually get to do this uh, hands on. They try to they get to actually learn about IP routing, not just from reading a chapter in the book, but doing it themselves. Uh, we do train the TA tutorials that happen over the internet. We do this at the start of every semester. So if you're teaching a class genie, you or your TA can attend this WebEx-based training class. It's typically two, two Friday afternoons and two Thursday afternoons. Uh, and uh, they have been very popular. We have a lot more coursework that's uh, being built for genie. Uh, Jim, uh, Mike Zink uh, uh, is building coursework based on Jim Crow's well known uh, networking textbook. We have uh, Genie modules being developed by Jay Icart to teach networking concepts. These include videos, assignments, uh, instructor guides. And finally, there's a MOOC uh, being built on Genie to teach people networking concepts. There is a session today. Uh, there's a session right after this where we will have, um, in today's session, we'll have people sort of use Genie, talk about their experiences, what went, went well, what didn't work well. Uh, they might have tips for people doing uh, teaching Genie in the future. And we'll also have a really uh, short overview of the lessons of the, of the courseware that's currently available, the new courseware that's coming, that's available now. We also do training at um, various conferences. So this this week on Friday, there's a workshop called CNET uh, in North Carolina, which is about doing experiment, experimentation on test methods with Genie. At Sixty in uh, Kansas City, uh, there will be a piece, there will be a workshop, a pre symposium workshop on Genie education. And then Morgan State University is hosting a workshop uh, in 
November, uh, for people in the local area to learn about gene uh, policies for research and education. If you would like to host a one day or one and a half day workshop in your region, we'd be happy to work with you. This is the first of the regional workshops we're trying. So what's next for Gini? Um, we are obviously growing this Gini deploying more racks. Um, if you would like to be a Gini enabled campus, you can get a Gini rack from any of the three vendors, depending on what kind of rack you would like, or you can deploy OpenFlow or Ymax on your campus. There are new tools that have been developed, tools that can support uh, more complex experimental topologies. Uh, there's a uh, tool called JAX that some of you here used yesterday about the JPEG. And then there's, there are um, experiments such as uh, data intensive experiments that have been carried out. Uh, you'll, see a, you'll see a demo of this tomorrow morning at the plenary. And uh, I mentioned the new GD was Postman. GD was standard on effort. There are similar efforts happening in different countries. Um, the stars show countries where there are genetic tests that are the GD. We, we, many of those people come to the GD conferences. We meet together to make sure test beds can interoperate, uh, adopt common APIs. And in fact, a few GDCs ago, there was an experiment that spanned, I think, seven different countries, with resources from seven different countries in one slice. The application they ran was, um, was to uh, estimate the green index vegetation they had. Uh, finally, what does Gini look like to an experimenter? Uh, I'm going to quickly breeze through this since we are almost out of time. I uh, uh, already mentioned Slice or resources that in Slice. Um, if you, as an experimenter, want to run an experiment, you go to, to what's called a clearinghouse, get a Slice, you get uh, access to the Slice, and then you talk to each of the resource providers called Gini, called aggregate providers. Ask for resources to add them to your slides. Um, to log into Genie, uh, we, we can, uh, if, if your campus belongs to an a federation called Incom, this is um, identity manage This is identity management. You don't even have to log into Genie. You log into your campus network, just like you would to access campus services, and can get redirected to Genie. So you don't have to apply to a separate Genie account. And this has been really great. It's been, it's been especially in running a class, you don't have to ask every student to go get an account. Your existing uh, uh, campus network account will work for them. Given that we have a few minutes, uh, I'm going to go in and skip this part. This part, all this says is that when you, when you get resources, there's actually a formal language to describe resources. and. Uh, your tool or your experiment to use this to talk to Gini. Unfortunately, we are out of time for a demo, but what I would like to do before we leave and go to the IT talks is give you a quick uh, tour of the agenda. But today, all the sessions marked with the green dot are suitable for newcomers. Uh, the only uh, prerequisite is uh, basic understanding of Gini, things that you uh, uh, learned in the tutorial yesterday. Uh, there are future internet architecture uh, tutorial, tutorials by future internet architecture teams that are new to this GEC. You might want to check them out. Definitely go to the demo session this afternoon, this evening. You will see uh, ex experiments. You will see things that people are doing with Genie or uh, new tools coming up. That is a great place to uh, learn about uh, how Genie is being used. What's coming up? The most plenary again. You get you see. Four demos of people of experiments people are running with Gini. So um, I think that's and then um, we we hope you enjoy the conference. I hope you come back again. The next conference is going to be in Washington D.C. It's going to be a really big conference with a lot more demos and that's. Um, uh, 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 these are going to be. Big demos, demos that show off a lot of the capabilities of GD and GD tools. I hope you can make it. There are travel grants available for new second days. So, um, thank you very much. Right after this, at, uh, so in 15 minutes, there's a lightning talk session 
at the breakfast area. So the people doing demos are going to do 30 second talks describing the demo, trying to convince you to go see the demo. And for you, you can use that to plan your time with the demo session. There are 40 some demos, so you probably can't spend see every one of them. So at the lightning talk session, you might try to you might want to prioritize which ones you want to see. And uh, there will be a voting for the best demo this, uh, at the demo session. You can with ballots. You can use the stickers on your uh, that you got and put the stickers against the uh, demos you would like to vote for. So I'm, I'm sorry we don't have time for it. For me to do a demo, uh, I can do one for you later if you're interested. But I would like <coughs> to take questions.